Hello and welcome. Carrie here from, oh, I don't have the shirt on today, Healing Humanity, the Power of a Proper Diet. I'm thankful, grateful, blessed. I have Jeff DeProsperous on the channel tonight. Jeff, how's it going, buddy? Great, Carrie. Thanks for having me here. And I, I can't wait till I can wear my shirt because I know you, uh, you sent me a, a nice care package in the mail. I can't wait till it comes. Hey, you should be getting it any day. And it was a huge care package. So we, nice. we got healing, healing Humanity shirts. I got a bunch of the bracelets. I got shirts for you and the boys. I got stuff in there Perfect. for Dwight and Ronnie. And nice. so Jeff is on the channel tonight. And we also have Sammy who just jumped on. So I'm going to let Sammy in now too. Hey, Sammy, Hello. how are you? Welcome. I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for doing this. Sound is okay. Oh, my angle is okay. Should yeah. I put my, my camera closer. Maybe down a little much? lower. Lower? Okay, here you go. How's Perfect. that? Perfect. Perfect. You oh. sound good. All right, Sammy. good. Welcome to the channel, Sammy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Perfectly good. I'm super duper excited to meet you guys. Likewise. So, well, I'll introduce you first. Here's my buddy, Jeff. Jeff DeProsperous. Meet Sammy. This is my first time Hello. meeting Sammy. Hi, Hi, Sam. Hi, Sammy. I, uh, I can feel your energy. Uh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. You have, no, you have, so, you have good vibes. And uh, I was, I've been <laughs> trying I've been to emit some of my vibes. No, absolutely. You, may, you actually, you, you bring a glow to my face. You make me smile just seeing you. So thank you very thank much. Thank you. Same here. Same here. You're, you're good. Welcome. Good. So I was hoping to kind of do a little bit of a round table and I'm hoping to learn more about Sammy's journey and Jeff's journey. And maybe we can mm -hmm. learn from each other. And um, Jeff, I know you may have some limited time, so if you got to jump off, I appreciate all the time we can get for sure. But maybe, uh, maybe Sammy, if we could just start with you, and maybe if you could tell us a little bit about your story, and then we'll jump on over to Jeff and share a bit of his story for those that aren't familiar with it yet. Okay, okay. But uh, taking to the consideration of the fact that Jeff has to leave, so if I elaborate my cancer story, that's going to take 30 minutes or so. <laughs> I have to kind of. Should we have Jeff it... go first? Yeah, yeah, I, I, it will be better. I think so. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank, thanks, Sammy. Um, and I think I have a little bit more time than uh, I've initially told Carrie. I think I might have a, uh, an hour. So I'm oh, not, cool. Not, oh, not that, that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, I, it's uh, Sammy and Carrie. It's it's Family Day weekend in Canada. I don't know if mm -hmm. you've ever heard of that. No. Where we dedicate a, a whole weekend to family. Actually, Monday Monday is a government uh, like it's a it's a federal holiday across Canada where everything shuts down and it's just it's just for it's just family time. So we call it Family Day weekend. So my boys my boys are just kind of waiting. Uh, there's a something uh, that we like to watch in the uh, athletic world. It's called the Sl NBA Slam Dunk Contest. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> They're waiting for me, and I think it's going to start in about an hour. So I think I, I'm good for you guys now, and I'm really excited. Um, when first off, before I even tell my story, Car uh, Carrie and Sammy, I I was really excited when Carrie invited me on for this live, um, and it, I know it's streaming from Carrie's channel, and I think it's streaming from my channel too. So hi to my subscribers. Um, I was really excited because when he sent me a message about you, Sammy. Um, you and I can really uh, relate to each other, I think, in terms of what we, the, the journey that we're on. And uh, I think you're my, you're kind of my style. I think Carrie can probably admit to that, like in terms oh. of your, yeah, like your energy and your athleticism and your, 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 your love for fitness and well-being. Um, it's a real honor to be on with you because I checked out, I checked out your website um, and I know you, you can expand on that later. And I checked out your Instagram and, um, you kind of, you kind of motivated me, Sammy, cause I have, I'm sure you, I'm pretty positive like you, but sometimes you have your down, down times and last, last little bit, last couple of days have been kind of a little bit of a downtime for me. I'm not sure why, uh, but, uh, you motivate when I was watching you on Instagram last night before, when I was lying in bed and. Uh, checking out your website, you really motivated me. So I just want to say thank you, Sammy, before I quickly tell my story. Thank you. I'm very flattered. <laughs> Actually, Jeff, sorry. Yes. Uh, the one thing I wanted to tell you is the uh, exact same thing I felt when I watched uh, the video with Inner Kelly 
fantastic. <laughs> exactly. Thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Right. We are, uh, you know, inspiring each other, which is yes. brilliant, beautiful. It Good is, friendship. It is, it is beautiful. I hope we can, mm-hmm. uh, can carry this friendship on. And uh, yeah, Car- definitely. Car- Carrie's like, a, I don't know what you are, Carrie. You're like a, a mediator, but you're like liaison. <laughs> right. Matchmaker. Matchmaker. You're, you're like matchmaker, liaison. You're like, you're hooking us up with. <laughs> You know, yeah, up with doc- doctors and lot, lots of people. So I'm very blessed to have you in my life as well, Carrie. So I, thank you well, too. Thank you, Jeff. And I just want to say, um, you guys are inspiring each other, but both of you are inspiring a lot of people. Sammy, I've seen some of the videos you did with the other doctors. Jeff has as well. And there's people already in the comments uh, saying that same thing. So uh, before Jeff shares his story, I just wanted to say, if you have questions for Jeff or Sammy, or you have your own story, please share it in the comments and we're going to get to all of those. So, um, or if you have any questions, just post them in the sidebar. So, so yeah, Jeff, if you wouldn't mind, I know you've shared it before, but there's probably a lot of new people on here that haven't heard your story yet. Yes, sure. Thank you. And yeah, just also to all my subscribers, I just, I, I got my phone out. So I'm going to, I'm taking glances in case there's some serious questions on my channel too. Um, everybody, my name is Jeff and my, my mantra is that I'm on a journey to becoming cancer free. Uh, so, and that's my mantra in life for the, for the past, uh, little while, but it truly has been my mantra for the almost two years now. Um, coming up this April and May, um, it's been a couple years that my journey I've been on and I have stage four colon cancer, um, that, uh, has fully metastasized to my liver. Um, in terms of how many tumors I have on my liver, they, they can't even count. There's too many. Um, so I've been deemed uh, incurable, uh, inoperable, terminally ill, palliative. Uh, those, those terms seem very harsh to me, but um, I don't take them as serious as some of my uh, mainstream doctors have told me. I, I try to... Uh, approach every single day like it's a blessing, hence uh, my channel, Blessings on My Journey. And um, I'm really starting to uh, count my blessings every single day. And all the moments that I have, including this moment right now that I have with uh, Sammy and Carrie, uh, I'm very blessed to be on with you. Uh, my, my two sons are my main motivation. I have two sons. Uh, their names Peter and Dante, and they really keep me going every single day. I have a wife named Martha. Um, I have a sister. I have a mom. I have a dad, but my dad passed away about four months ago. Um, and I have a lot of close friends. And the, my real friends, I've really noticed in the past two years. And a quick shout out to my best friend, Dwight Garlow, um, who uh, I hope he, he watches this because I think I might have some exciting news with Carrie. Uh, we might be opening up Dwight to the our our subscribers to the YouTube world. Uh, I think there's going to be a video coming up soon where Jeff introduces his best friend Dwight. Um, Dwight has been like a medicine man to me, um, a doctor. He's of the indigenous uh, culture here in Canada, and he is just he is an encyclopedia of wealth because he, he's the one that taught me to follow a lot of doctors in the YouTube world um, by sending me videos. And those doctors, Carrie has connected me with. And it's helped me a lot on my journey. Um, and there's just, you know, there's a lot of people in my life right now that, you know, you know who you are. I just want to say hi to you because these people, you, you really need to surround yourself with the right people. And I think Sammy could probably agree to that. That's the biggest thing is, is having the right people in your life, the positive people in your life. Um, we live in a world where there's going to be negative people um, and people that, I don't know if they consciously do this, but they try to bring other people down. So I try to avoid those people. Um, Dr. Anthony Shafee, he made that suggestion to me right off the bat on Carrie's 24 hour live stream, uh, which was a while ago now. Um, some people you just gotta ignore them and, and keep and keep your head up high and keep trucking along. So that's my story. Um, I think I'm getting a little bit better at being quicker at telling it, Carrie. So <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah, that's awesome, Jeff. And you're thriving as a carnivore. So I filmed Jeff. Adam and I got to spend a week or so, a little bit less than a week, with Jeff and his family out in Canada. And it sucked leaving. <laughs> I miss you, Jeff. It was so much fun. I can't wait to get back up there again. Um, oh, I'm glad you said that because I really, me and the boys and my wife, we really want to see you. And, ne and next time you're staying at my house, okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We couldn't, just real quick, I'll just say this. I learned a lot from Jeff the week I was there. Um, Jeff, you're just like the ultimate competitor. I said this to you earlier in an email, but I'm like, why do I like Jeff so much? Just because you're an awesome guy. But I know you're, uh, you're, you've been into athletics your entire life and everything like that. Michael Jordan's your big hero. But I'm like, he's got nothing on Jeff in terms of competition. Uh, Jeff is just kicking butt. Like, I, we couldn't, Adam and I couldn't keep up with Jeff for the week. We got there, and Jeff's like, here's the itinerary for today. We're going to be doing this, 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 and this. We're going to osteopath, naturopath. We're going to the gym. We're going to, we're going to go work out. We're going to meet with Dwight. We're going to go do a cold plunge. And it was just incredible. Like, it's a testament to the proper human diet, but it's also just a testament to how awesome Jeff is. Just killing Thanks. Himself. Thanks, Kerry. And just to add on, Michael Jordan is my all-time favorite athlete, and today today is his birthday. So if oh, there's nice. some strange <laughs> reasons, if the AI robots can send this video to him, happy birthday, Michael Jordan. He's, uh, he's 61. Birthday. Yeah, he's 61. He's the GOAT of all time. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. So I guess we could just we could jump around kind of roundtable, but yeah, Sammy, maybe if you want to tell us your story now. Yeah, yeah. I like to talk about not only my diagnosis, but also I'd like to talk about my dietary history, which is why yes. more interest, interest in just the cancers and stuff. Um, I was born 1972. Uh, I'm 51 right now. And uh, the thing is that at age six, I became a vegan kid believe it or not. Not because I wanted to save the planet, I wanted to, to kind of help the, the animals and stuff. The reason was because dermatologist, oh, by the way, not dermatologist, you know, I had skin issues uh, going on and uh, dermatologist decided the reason I had the skin issues is, was because of the fact that I was eating animal flesh. So that was the reason I became a vegan. Six years old, malnourished, extremely malnourished. Mm. And uh, the thing is that uh, I was raised by a single mom. And uh, again, again, 19, 1972, back then, conservative country. And uh, she couldn't figure out how to raise fatherless child. So at age four, me four, she changed, it, she changed her occupation. He decided, she decided to work at night, meaning that during that hour, she would leave our place 3 p.m. And then she would come back next month until next morning, meaning that I was completely alone mm. at age four, almost feeling abundant. So extremely lonely and malnourishment. And then my mom, I think uh, she might or should have felt guilty about it. That's why she left abundance of food. These are the elements, lonely, abundance of food, malnourishment, perfect recipe for eating disorders. Yes, at the age 15, I developed severe eating disorders. I was bulimic, and then I went to the psychiatrist, despite the fact that that psychiatrist have pub published many books. They are all about my, I don't know, human, human, I don't know, was a mental illness kind of stuff, but uh, he didn't know he didn't know anything about bulimia, bulimic conditions. He knew a little bit about anorexic conditions. So I was given seventeen tablets, psychiatric you know, tablets. Kelly, you know that what it's like, you know, seventeen tablets a day, at the age of fifteen. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Is that and a reminder, I was, I was like, <laughs> yep. of course, they didn't help. They didn't help at all. And uh, the thing is, uh, I developed two life-threatening purging behaviors. One, classic, self-vomiting, you know, self-induced vomiting. I vomiting things, 
once in a day, twice a day, three times a day. Sometimes I cut esophagus or throat, feeling absolutely miserable. And another one, which is going to relate it to cancer, I developed the habit of taking lots of, lots of, lots of laxatives a day. It really went bad to the point that I took one, no, no, 250 laxative tablets a day. 250 wow. laxative tablets a day. So my life is full of tripping to bathroom, feeling really ashamed. I couldn't tell this stuff to anyone. I was really suicidal. But uh, the thing is that at that time, I knew doctors was not able, doctors were not able to help me. That's why I took a correspondence, co co correspondence course, not that like an internet course to get the, like a, the study of uh, human biology, biochemistry, nutrition, all of that. that because of that, uh, around 2015, somewhere around, I came across the, some articles which are all about ketogenic diet. And the original idea of the ketogenic diet was that it's, it's meant for or children with epilepsy. Here comes the interesting part. Went to the psychiatrist, many, many places. They gave me, they kind of prescribed me anti seizure drugs, anti seizure drugs, ketogenic diet, anti seizure effect. And then I thought, it might work. Then I dove into a ketogenic diet. Obviously, plant based ketogenic diet, not that carnivore style. But I'm miraculously, or oh, miraculously, or oh, naturally, I was able to recover from the eating disorder. The reason, even it was you know, plant based, it, it, why it worked is due to the fact that previously I was fatophobic. I couldn't just accept the idea of eating fat. I used to go to the McDonald's when I was suffering from eating, those, eat this, eat, eating disorders every day. And then I would order burger, French fries, and some tea. They start from the French fry. I pick up the, one of the French fries, and I pick up the paper napkin, and I squeeze the fat crust out of it and until there is no stain. Then I ate a French fry. It's a almost cardboard. And then let's move on burger. And I pick it up the pate and I squeeze the oil, the fat, <laughs> you know. And then until it gets, you know, no stain to be found. It took maybe one and a half hour to eat uh, just the smallest side of the French fry and a simple burger. I couldn't order cheeseburger because cheese had fat. That's going to make you fat. So now I, I was on the ketogenic diet. Finally, my brain was able to absorb that fat. Even it was a plant oil. Still, my brain liked that. Yes, ketogenic diet helped uh, reversing a psychiatric condition, depression, the eating disorder, all of that. But the ketogenic diet itself didn't heal my GI issues. And, but uh, the, luckily, though, it was around 2018. There was an idea, zero-carb diet. If you eat a zero-carb diet, it's going to be carnivorous diet. I dove into the so-called carnivore diet. Back then, it wasn't called carnivore before, because of the fact that carnivore diet named by Dr. Sean Baker. Mm. I wasn't knowing that. I was not uh, realizing that it was carnivore diet. But... It was true game changer, obviously. Especially gas, GI issue, pain, it dissolved from carnival diet, even day one. Previously, my tummy was really distended, mm -hmm. like a pregnant one female. And now it's resolved, even one day one, a carnival diet, it's got flattened. And uh, the, another thing is that uh, energy, energy. Previously, my weight was 32 kilograms, 70 pounds. I'm 5'2", five, five mm -hmm. very emaciated. Now, carnivore diet, I was able to uh, gain my muscle without training. 
But、uh, now I'm getting energy. I pick up the dumbbell, pink dumbbells, and、uh, I saw me myself being s- stronger and stronger day by day because of the carnival. And、uh, another benefit I got at the moment was、uh, easy intermittent fasting. 2017, Jason Fang kind of a, was causing a sensation of intermittent fasting. And autophagy and all of that. Remember that?、Mm-hmm. And then I really wanted to try being on a plant based ketogenic diet, e r but I couldn't make it longer than 40, 14 hours of fasting was too much ordeal. I was so stressed out. But being on a carnival, everybody knows that you don't need to count when I'm going to open up my eating window. It's naturally. You are doing intermittent fasting. It's easy to reduce the numbers of meals you are consuming a day. That's a three benefit. And then I was enjoying the overall health for the next two years. I thought I was one of the most healthy people on this planet. Until 2020, there were a bunch of publications which are all about microbiome. Feed your guts with. Fiber. I was thinking that、uh, mm, it could be the, the last piece of the puzzle for some reason. I bought that idea and I reincorporated the, some fibrous vegetables on top of my you know, carnival diet. I had been on almost only beef diet, but I threw some of the vegetables. Admittedly, all of the gastrointestinal issues made a great comeback with force. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine that. But、uh, I kept going because they say your gut is going to adjust new e n v i r o n m e n t fibrous environments. I believe the bullshit. And I kept going until, <laughs> sorry, my French, one day. <laughs> I, love you, I love your French. <laughs> I under, yeah, I'm very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that? One, one, day, one day, until one day, 2020, April 4th. After eating、uh, beef, I ate. Some mushrooms and stuff. And I noticed what I noticed was that there is some kind of a dull pain, not that really painful moment, dull pain in my tummy. It was intensifying gradually, slowly. Next day, I went to the closest you know, hospital. And I, I think that they might have found something horrendously bad. They didn't tell me anything. They just sent me to the gigantic hospital where doctors discovered the fact that I was incubating the very advanced stage, stage, stage four cholesterol cancer, like Jeff, you have. Admittedly, I underwent operation, big invasive operation.、Uh, in the, at the operation, I, my half of the colon, ascending part, was cut, cut in half. And、uh, my four lymph nodes were out, and、uh, one third of the liver was out. And for some reason, appendix removed, got removed.、Wow. So it was like a one.、Uh, I was kept at ICU unit nearly 10 days. It was very, very intensive surgery. They even that caused some, opera- some complication that needs another operation. And after that, I was discharged, discharged from the hospital. Now I started to take、uh, chemo drugs. I wasn't you know, administrated, I, I took that already. Yeah, chemotherapy. Yeah. yeah. And、uh, it lasted, it was supposed to be、uh, six months or seven months. But、uh, the thing is that one month passed, month two in.、Uh, in. And、uh, what they discovered was that. New metastasis in my liver already. Enormous surgery, terrible chemo, and a pop, you know, new metastasis popped up. I was gaining an understanding of how less effective modern approach can be.、Mm. But here's the, here's the catch is that I wasn't so upset. The reason I was kind of a positive. Stayed positive is due to the fact that before my diagnosis, I already I knew the application of the ketogenic diet for cancer treatment way before my diagnosis. 
And also, I knew doctor didn't know anything about it. I was ridiculed. And also, at the time, given the advice from the doctor safely, everybody knows the renowned cancer biologist, according to his theory, not his theory, it's a fact, that cancer gets fueled by two energy substrates, mainly glucose and glutamine. Cut the two of them, literally, you are able to stop the cancer. And also, uh, he established GKI number. GKI number stands for, for the sake of audience, and a glu- GKI, a glucose keto index. Cancer likes glucose. And, a, and a, the thing is that if you have a low glucose number, uh, sy- the levels in your system, and high ketone level, since cancer cannot utilize uh, ketones, that's why you are very healthy, but can, cancer cannot survive. That's why you know having a low GKI number is a uh, crucial for cancer treatment, prevention, management, all of that. So I just uh, believed that what ha- what had had been doing, and I keep going. And uh, here's a interesting <laughs> part of my story again is that because of my cancer management. I was able to be on the Dr. Sean Baker's show, right? Success Stories, and Jeff, you are on. And, uh, and uh, at that time, before, what, two months before I was on his show, more than one year ago, I had taken uh, two CT scanning. What they discovered was new metastasis in my lung this time, just one year ago. But uh, I wasn't so serious about, or I was not fully aware of the seriousness of the new metastasis. Se- several reasons. One, it wasn't new. Already I had a liver metastasis. Second one, what's new? I wasn't serious about it. And also, I had no symptoms. Why bother to think about the operation? That's why even in the Dr. Sean Baker show, I, I said, hey, I got the metastasis. I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> hey, more than media kind of stuff. I was saying that. <laughs> but obviously, you guys already must have noticed that I was making a mistake, even being on the carnival in the contents of the cancer management. What are the mistakes? Let's say three mistakes I made. One, because of the carnival, that g- g- gives me energy to the point that I completely forgot about I'm a cancer patient. Cancer is no joke. You shouldn't forget about that. Number two, since I have no symptoms, so my focus should have been cancer management. But uh, my focus was gym performance, especially hypertrophy. I wanted to be big, you know what I mean? So <laughs> that to, to achieve that, uh, let's say dietary intervention to be increased the protein intake, which ridiculously I did. I, I'm a tiny, you know, small bit person, as I mentioned that, but I was achieving 200 grams of the protein, 200. It's mm. insane. Of course, it's, it's gonna uh, gluconeogenesis or spiking mTOR, insulin, you know, what's that, the IGF hormone kind of a, like a stimuli, all of that shouldn't be good. And thirdly, two, uh, third, uh, three, mistake three, number three, that to achieve the higher uh, protein intake, just eating beef is expensive. Now I started to reincorporate to eat chicken, pork, fish, eggs, all of that. That was the mistake. Why it was a mistake, you may ask, is the fact that here's the deal. If you eating the just the ruminant animals like a beef or sheep, goat, something like that, they have a four stomachs, stomachs, stomach chambers, and a unique bacteria to the point that they can detoxify some of the unwanted elements from the diet they were eating. These days, conventional way to raise them, the end of their, their life, we're gonna. Uh, give them the corn, soy, wheat, sprinkling uh, some glyphosate and stuff. 
But、uh, mm. to some extent, they can detoxify that. That's why it's, it's, it's a, just safe. It's a safe to eat ruminant a n i m a l In contrast, the pork, chicken, eggs, and kind of, you know, the animals, the fresh, are one stomach animal, monogastric animal,、yes. meaning that they have only one, you know, digestive system. So what they eat is going to reflect on their fresh. So, what we feed them is corn, soy, wheat, and all of that. In my case, only in my case, not for everyone, I might have an immunological response or inflammatory response to eating monogastric animals. That's why, you know, I sh- when I ate the you know, monogastric animals, my ketone production was compromised. That is why I think. That I allowed myself to develop new metastasis to my lung. You see, this is a silly mistake. And, uh, and uh, the why I was able to realize this mistake was the fact that since you know, first、uh, appearance on Dr. Shaw Baker's show, I was able to increase the great,、uh, incredibly you know, supportive followers in my Instagram channel. One of the, my earliest followers,、uh, she's a cancer biologist, and、uh, she became my, one of the best friends, Pia. Big shout out to Pia. She's、uh, helping cancer patients by, by herself. And、uh, she kept telling me that, hey, Sunny, did you check GKI number? Yeah,、mm. yeah, I checked that one year ago. It was okay. It was okay. But、uh, Since she was persistent, I checked the GKI number soon after being on the Baker's show, Dr. Baker's show. It was alarmingly high. And then, at first, to, to, to reduce the GKI number, at first, I increased, increased the、uh, like、fasting time, daily fasting time, daily intermittent fasting time. But、uh, for me, for some reason, yeah, as I mentioned, it's easy to do intermittent fasting, but、uh, Uh, longer than 20 hours, I'm gonna be so cranky, less motivated. My body shuts down. I give up. And then what I realized <coughs> was that when I, I was e- able to achieve that low GKI number, I was just eating beef, fatty beef. Then I switched back to like an only beef diet, so called lion diet. My GKI number plummeted. Then、mm. I realized that, oh, I see. That's、uh, my discovery, actually. So now I, I was gaining the, I, I gained the knowledge through lots of mistakes and achievement. I currently, I've been helping people with cancer. And,、uh, and I set up my business for consultant, consultancy. And、uh, previously, I, I priced myself to some、uh, you know, degree. But、uh, currently, I got hired by some company, so I don't need to, to get the money from the cancer patient, but I have to, I have to live. And、uh, currently, I'm offering a free consultation to help them to share the story like Jeff, you are doing. That is, a, that is a, my, my, just a, who I am. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I love it. I love it.、Uh, Carrie, just, I just want to touch on that for a second.、Um, I, I know you're going to have questions. Go for it, Jeff. Yeah. It's, it's, I think myself, I know everything you were talking about, Sammy.、Um, but you've actually made me realize I, I need to work harder at certain things. And the carnivore diet can be very, very healing.、Uh, The lion diet can be. And that's why, and I, and I know the thing about ruminant animals, the four chambers versus the one chamber. And that's why, and I love how you say it, Sammy.、Um, for you and me, we need to consume the ruminant animals. And I'm not doing, I love beef. Like before I got on this call, Carrie, I had a Power Bowl. So I had beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. <laughs> but, you know, but you know what? It's awesome. And that can be a treat for me once in a while, but I need to, I need to get a little more strict with the lion diet.、Um, you know, eliminate pork, eliminate chicken, 
eliminate eggs once in a while because there's carbs in there. Um, I think I do feel the best. And a big shout out to my friend Dwight because he's hooked us up with a butcher. And I just put in my freezer two days ago, 50 ribeye steaks um, that they're good two inches um, that I think I can see myself, to be honest with you. Um, that French guy uh, that Dr. Berg interviewed, the first guy I watched, uh, not Guy, it was the other guy, I forget his name right now, but he ate a ribeye steak every day and that's all he ate. And then he did the 21 day fast. So everything that Sammy has mentioned makes 100% uh, sense. It's actually like, it's proven science. Like the, G the GKI is proven by Professor Seifert. Like th this is why we need our glucose low, our ketones high. And I'm struggling, Sammy, with when I'm eating, my GKI gets too high. And I'm like, I'm carnivore. Why is it so high? The best time my GKI is when I'm fasting. And I do a five-day fast every other week. But, Sammy, if I just eat lion diet, I think I can get that GKI down when I'm eating too. And I need to work on that. that one, one uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, that the... One disclaimer, though, is that I tried to a little bit incorporate some egg yolk. And also, quite recently, quite recently, I have incorporated kimchi. Oh, surprise. You know, this is something some, you know, like my follower don't like to, don't like me saying this. The reason I kind of accepted the idea of getting kimchi in my diet is, despite the fact that I'm a kind of a advocating the lion diet, is due to the fact that I had been constipated even after operation, even being on a, just a lion diet. I had been constipated until I started to eat kimchi, not that big you know, amount, just like some kimchi, especially certain kimchi made from Japanese company. And of course there is a sugar in it, but it didn't, didn't bother my GKI number. And, 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 but, but, uh, 10 gram of the sugar per 100 gram of the kimchi. That's the level of the sugar. But uh, one day, I spotted a Korean company made kimchi, which has much less sugar in it. Oh, healthier. I switched to Korean company made kimchi. My regularity stopped. I got constipated again. And I switched back to that Japanese company made certain kimchi. And then my regularity resumed. I think that you and I, myself, you know, colon cancer survivors, well, our colon is massively compromised. Maybe we might need some of the boost of microbiome or prebiotics or biotics kind of stuff. I I'm still trying to find the, the solution. This I is my disclaimer. I, I agree with you, Sammy. Um, and that's one concern that people that there's certain people in my life that are on board with me being carnivore. And one of them actually is my natural path carry, Dr. Reed, who's super awesome. I hope he's watching. He is concerned about the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And he brought that up to me because he hasn't really dealt with cancer patients that are carnivore. He's dealt with cancer patients that are keto, but carnivore, he's concerned with the microbiome. Um, and I want to expand a little more with Seifert if we get on with him and Shafi a little more with them and learn a little bit more about bi microbiome. So from time to time, I do have some sauerkraut with my ribeye steak and sauerkraut is fermented. Um, when it's fermented, it, and I've checked my glucose, it doesn't affect my glucose as well, Sammy. So I think, and kom uh, kombucha, uh, the, the mm -hmm. drink kombucha with the low sugar, uh, that's good for your microbiome too. So I do that from time to time. It's mm -hmm. not something I have every day, but mm -hmm. um, just because I'm concerned with it too, and I'm I'm on board with you, Sammy. I need to do a little bit more research about what keeps our microbiome uh, healthy and the way uh, and 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 has us performing um, and our organs performing properly while we're on the carnivore diet. Right. Uh, the, the, but the one thing, though, we shouldn't fall into some trap is that, uh, you know, fiber feeds good microbiome. It isn't. 
Yes. I had been we don't, need fi- we don't need fiber. Definitely no fiber. No, the point no I don't need that, any fiber at all. Yeah, yeah. I know. You, you see, I was vegetarian, the vegans, all of that. I yes. literally, I was consuming like three or five buckets of vegetable, whole grain. <laughs> it's yeah. because fiber is good for your, you know, digestion, right? <laughs> we don't need. You know, yeah. I, and I, I speak of Dr. Reed highly. But then I have a few other uh, health practitioners that I work with because, and I'm not going to say who, I have an osteopath, mm-hmm. I have a Wim Hof breather, I have a hyperbaric person, I have a ton of them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a few of them, they're still sold on this fiber thing. I and, know, and, I know. And, this... and, 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 and it's like, I'm like, I tell them, the more fatty meat I eat, the easier it is for me to go to the washroom. I've, mm-hmm. In my entire life, I've never been able to go to the washroom so smooth and soft. I'm sorry, this is on. Everybody's listening to this soft, stools, <laughs> but it, it's the truth. When you eat, when you eat ribeye steaks, it fatty, fatty, and you're adding butter to stuff. It you, my stools are fine. Um, yeah, but you don't, Dr. Shafi. Yeah, right. Yes. Dr. Shafi always makes uh, the point that if you have a very kind of a tough and it's true, difficult stool to pass, you need a more fat. Actually, I had to make an argument because I had been eating really, really fatty. You know, 90% of the calorie eating comes from fat in my, my case. I need yes. a lot of, you know, calorie. And then, but I hadn't to be able to make myself regular until introduction of the kimchi. So Kim- there is a something. Kimchi. Not only kimchi. Kimchi, you know, yeah, kimchi is a... Carrie, have you heard of kimchi? kimchi? Yes, yes. Uh, so oh, I, I'm yeah, sorry, you I, don't I, know it. I, I need, World I need be, famous. I, I need to be cultured here. Tell me. <laughs> where, uh, kimchi is a kind yeah. of fermented uh, pickles, uh, you know, the created by Korean. Korean. Gotcha. That, gotcha. That, that's the part. That's what I told you that, you know, I talked about the fact that, you know, I switched to Korean kimchi. Oh, thank you. That's Thanks, the one. Thanks, Carrie. Can, Carrie, can you order, can you order that from Amazon and sell it in my house? <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> We're gonna have to get the paid for you know that promotion. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, my point here is that not all of the kimchi, kimchi's work. In my case, only Japanese certain kimchi works. Mm. You know, I have I have tried all of the fermented foods, nattos and misos and uh, uh, yogurt, kefir, kombucha. You know. This world, nothing worked until I came across a Japanese-made certain kimchi. Mm. So there is a certain bacteria. It is kind of a suits your environment of their bacteria. Sure. That's the thing. I, 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 I think I'm right. Mm. Not I, all, of that, all of that. No, yes, I, go I, I, I Just listening to you talk, I, I, I'm willing to try a kimchi and uh, just to see. I, I don't really have any uh, constipation, but mm-hmm. um, if I can improve my microbiome um, and how everything's working, why not, right? Once in a while. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, definitely. Um, I just, Carrie, I just want to, I know I want Carrie to kind of take over and because he's really good at this, but I just want to say hi to my, uh, I'm taking a glance and Carrie, I know you and I are a big fan of One Hope for All, Sandra. She's yeah. super. She's super awesome, and she is like my moderator on my channel. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I people are ask are asking questions about me, and she's answering. He's Canadian. He's a school teacher. It's like <laughs> it's it's really awesome to read. Um, I, um, and you know, and she's saying yay to fat. Fat's the key. She's saying stuff like that. There's also someone on my channel, and I want to give a shout out to this person. I hope you don't mind, Carrie. His no, go right ahead. His name is Mark Allen, and I got no problem saying this because I think he kind of wrote this to everybody. He said he just found out that my stage three lung cancer is gone. Jeff is my biggest inspiration. He, he wow. had stage he had stage mm. three lung cancer, and cool. he's been do, and he's going on and on. He's been doing a lot of the protocol that I've been doing, and he just found out it's gone. Um, uh, Mark, thanks for sharing that. I. Uh, Send some of your like magic powers my way and me and Sammy's way. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, one, one, another disclaimer I have to mention yes. that unlike you know you Jeff and uh, yes. other you know people uh, saying that uh, they are put uh, cancer in remission. In my yes. case, I'm not cancer free. Yes. I do have a cancer to organs. 
lung and liver. Just uh, I think that I'm perfectly managing them, living with them harmoniously. I don't say, hey, if cancer, you know, kill cancer, fight cancer. I rather try to make them well behaved. Since it's your cells to begin with. I like, I like, I like, I like your mantra, Sammy. Mm-hmm. And I, Thank I, you. And I, I'm constantly toying with my mantra, eh, Carrie? Where right. I used to introduce myself as that. And then I had a friend tell me I'm on a journey to be cancer free. And I, sometimes I struggle with that because... Mm-hmm. I don't, I, know. I, don't, I, I don't call it my, I, I've been told many times I'm not allowed. My subscriber said to call it my cancer. Um, I can't call it my cancer, but it is cancer and it is inside of me. And I think I'm doing the same thing as you, Sammy. I'm living mm-hmm. with it and I'm living with it to my, to my fullest. Mm-hmm. And um, I, it, it might not ever go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, yes. I'm, Thank, I'm, Thank I'm, you. Yes, Thank I'm, you. I like I'm that. Gonna, I'm going to live. Mm-hmm. I'm going to live and I'm going to live and I, and I feel healthy. I think, mm-hmm. uh, Carrie's helped me get to this state where, um, I'm continuing to re- do a lot of research on, especially diet and, uh, keep tweaking my diet and my fasting and my mm-hmm. exercise. And I know, I think Carrie, you're probably going to lead into it, but hopefully exercise is one of your topics. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. Exercise matters. Big yeah. Time. Well, I, I'm learning so much here. Sammy, you're, you're incredible. Jeff, you're incredible. The biggest thing that I learned, you're talking about GKI and ruminant animals and lion diet. And I hadn't heard that before. So Sammy, on the GKI, is that something you test daily or like how often are you testing it? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, previously, I used to check GKI on an everyday basis. Uh, soon after, I was given advice from Safery, which was almost three years ago. But the currently, though, I do check GKI number once in a two months. Mm. He, here's a, my another justification to not to check GKI on an everyday basis is because sometimes you're going to get obsessed with numbers. Yes. Sometimes, right, right? Sometimes you kind of uh, have a sloppy night's sleep and you know, the pets yeah. are noisy, neighbor, you know, bugging, kind of <laughs> something. And then, then you are kind of stressed out. You know, check the GKI. Oh, shit, yeah. what is it? And it, that I don't want to, you know, number to dictate my mood. Rather right. than you just, just believe that I've been doing something good, it's going to be okay. Rather than, you know, oh, it have a high, high GKI number. Oh, no. I, I try to kind of reduce the, the checking times. Right. I, Once in a two, I, week, two, yes, two, two months. I agree with you, Sammy. I, I, I need to lower it too. I, I normally just check it when I'm fasting. I can kind of tell when I'm eating if I'm in a, a good, a low glucose and high key. You can mm-hmm. tell the way you feel. Oh, um, yeah. So it's, there's no need to check it. And you're so right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could, and like you said, you can have like noisy neighbors or you wake up uh, too much in the middle of the night you get you get cortisol spikes when you're not supposed to get cortisol spikes that affect your glucose there's yeah, so many things massively. there's so yeah there's so many things you you know you, you, you our emotions can control um our hormones which affect our our, our gki as well so mm-hmm. you know I, i'm learning a lot uh dwight teaches me that quite a bit he's constantly doing that um and he's trying to give me tips all the time on how to keep your cells as calm as possible, right? Mm. It's, very, it's, it's very difficult. Another thing, though, is that uh, I kind of post my GKI number. And yes. uh, people leave the comment saying that, oh, I want to achieve the high ketones. There are still many people out there, you know, keto number chasers. They're trying yeah. to get that, you know, five, six, seven and I, doing, I wanted to ask shots, you. shots of MCT oil. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, right, right. You stole my thunder. I was about to say that. <laughs> uh, that yeah, I, I, that, I, my my son Peter. Yes. Me, I'm like, he's like, Dad, how come it's not as high as it should be? I go, oh, I better go do a shot of MCT oil. But, I know, <laughs> I drink MCT. You can yeah. get the high keto without without any benefits of the health. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the, I have to make sure that if your goal is, let's say, general health or mitochondrial health, or, you know, lose, lose fat or something, you don't need to have a, such a high ketone all the time. Yes. Yes, I, I agree. That. I, I, I right? agree. 
And I, and I, I don't want to ex- just, just expand on that because you're a hundred percent right there, Sammy. Um, Sammy, Sammy and me are a little bit different than mm-hmm. Carrie and then everybody else because we are living with cancer. People that, people that are metabolically healthy can be doing different things than what care than what Sammy and I are doing. They still yeah. need to be they still need to be conscious with their health and watch especially their carb and sugar intake. But you know, Dwight always taught me, Jeff, when you become metabolically healthy, I'll teach you the right vegetables, the right fruit to in- reintroduce. To be honest with you, the more and more I get in the carnivore diet, and hopefully the carnivore community likes this. I'm not really excited about introducing vegetables back in my diet. I don't think I ever will. I don't think I ever will be. Carrie, I will be. I don't, I don't need to eat one. Okay, um, Jeff, and, Jeff. Another, yes. another argument I'd like sure. to mention is sure, that, sure. you know, since or, almost my youth and childhood, I was, you know, eating all with uh, fruits and vegetables and all of that. That's why I do, I do dream about eating uh, crunchy vegetables cucumbers and you know sure. lettuce no, and I'm, all of that i get it i get it even and, and, though they're not gonna i love them but they're not gonna love me but still i'm idiot to <laughs> dreaming about them munching <laughs> no you know what i i was a big fan if there's anything i miss the most in the carbohydrate world mm-hmm. and here i hope you know i hope some of these uh vegan vegetarians are listening because they'll make you happy uh <laughs> i fruit i love fruit and i do have a little i had oh. a little bit of a sweet tooth um, I know, but, what, but you know, of I do, if 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 I do become metabolically healthy, and even right now, from time to time, I will have mm-hmm. the odd bowl of raspberries. But it's, it's becoming <laughs> yeah, yeah, less it's and okay. less. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I I will introduce something like berries mm, again it, when yeah. when I become metabolically healthy again. Hopefully, right, uh, right, I can get to that point. But 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 once again, I'm gonna say it. I I'm happy with Carrie's favorite meal. The power mm-hmm. bowls. I just ate a huge power bowl before I got on here. Mm-hmm, the the mm-hmm. beef bacon, the beef bacon oh, butter and eggs. Lovely. I can, I can yeah. just eat that all all day. And, mm-hmm. uh, of I'm course, happy. of course. But uh, you, don't you have a, such a weird feeling that oh, I wish I could munch on that bread or popcorns and stuff. It, you know what's weird? You know what's weird? The bread I don't miss at all. And being oh being, really? Be, being, Ita- be, being Italian, Sammy. I grew oh. up. Like, okay, just like pasta you, you, stuff. just like yeah, just like you grew up on fruits and vegetables, I grew up on bread and pasta, and mm-hmm. and my mother's tomato sauce. And when I ate pasta, mm-hmm. um, after I ate the pasta, I would grab a piece of bread, a good mm-hmm. Italian bread, mm-hmm. and, and, and 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 all the excess sauce, I would soak up with the bread and eat it. So oh, I, would, I, I was big time, into, big time into bread and and, and pasta, and that's uh-huh. the thing I don't I, I don't miss at all. I actually oh, don't really? miss, I don't miss it at all. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just the fruit uh, once in a while. Oh my goodness! Um, I sometimes, you know, made a. I I sometimes make a very bad joke to say people, hey, if my cancer is way advanced to do anything, I'm gonna eat all of the crap. I was yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. My I agree. my, you know, hospice hospice, you know, like a feast. It's gonna be, you know, like a cookie and cracker and ice cream, the, you know, bullshit all of that. <laughs> Carrie, that's my dream when, that, no, that's a, no i get it because when carrie and adam were over adam kept making jokes hey carrie that that uh we're gonna go eat donuts after we eat and stuff like that and yeah. carrie 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 ordered a 12 pack of donuts at starbucks mm-hmm. in the morning right he kept mm-hmm. joking around about that and I, yeah, think, I think i think it's good you know what this is where people gotta understand and i I'm sorry, but sometimes I meet sometimes I meet vegans and vegetarians that are really rude about food, mm. and I haven't really met in the carnivore community people that are like in your face. We can joke around about stuff. We mm-hmm. can we can we can really like hey like uh, uh, it, it's not a big deal. Like you know yeah. if, if if people make mistakes or they cheat, mm-hmm. we, we Carrie and I got a buddy named Russ. Uh, he's all, he's always falling off the wagon. Right. And it's, it, 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 it's not, it's not a big deal. Shout out mm-hmm. to Russ, by the way. I hope you're tuned in. <laughs> ah, yeah, I know. I know. If that you are vegan, if you even accidentally eat a kind of a small portion of the egg, you are over. You are a bad yeah. person. You you're are bad done. Yeah, right. I, I know. I know. I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 not dogmatic you know, I, about I, it. I don't, I don't think all vegans and vegetarians are horrible people, but I, mm-hmm. I, I have heard them be a little bit odd when it comes to 
the way the way they react to the way other people eat. Mm. Okay, very so, judgmental. They're very judgmental. I agree. I, I don't know, mm. Terry. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I I agree. Yeah, I just did a video with Dr. Barry talking about um, how plants can be dangerous. Yes. And it was more so about pesticides and glyphosate and all of the forever chemicals and things that are in them. But um, yeah, very judgmental. But um, you know, one of the things I'm always learning stuff new here and I'm learning from Sammy. I never heard this before, Jeff, on the GKI focus. I've heard about the importance of lion diet and focusing on ruminant animals for people with autoimmune disorders or other mm -hmm. things like that, like Michaela Peterson did, but not for lowering GKI. That's like really interesting. And now I have, we're getting some comments from people. Abram said, same experience as Sammy eliminated dairy, eggs, lean protein, focused on ruminant protein, moderated amounts of protein result. JKI improved tremendously. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. interesting. I, exactly. I, I just want to say hi to Adam. I'm a big fan of Adam. He's from uh, Malaysia. Um, oh. I, I did a, I did a call with him um, and he, and he's, he's on a similar journey that we're on. Uh, mm, so hi, I hi, see. Abram. Yep. Right. Right. So that's really interesting. That's a good, a good sort of note and takeaway. Like, I don't know, Jeff, if you've experimented with that at all uh, I, with your GKI readings. Yeah. Indirectly I have, and I, and I've realized it and I think I need to, I need to do a week of lion diet may and I'm, you know, I'm eating for a couple more days and then I'm fasting because I got, but I, I think that yeah. if, Jeff, if you don't yes. have a kind of a, or, Inflammatory response to pork and chicken. That yes, is, you are good I to go. I, 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 thank you. Thank I you. do. I don't. I don't have. I don't have a. I, I, I don't. You're right. I don't have an inflammatory response. I don't feel mm -hmm. horrible. The only time I, what I, the only thing I can say is, especially with chicken, mm, uh, yeah. chicken, ch chicken wings. I've stopped eating chicken wings out. I got to eat them from mm -hmm. my house, and they got to come out of my oven, and they got to have butter on them. Because the only oh, what, what, what I, do you mean? What do you mean? You know, outside, like, you know, if, like you, if you go, if you go to like, if you go eat like at a restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, those chicken wings get cooked in seed oils. And that's, the, ah, that's, that's, that's the, the part. Only, that's the only time I, I feel a little bit of an inflammatory response. Mm. Um, so, and I think Kara, you probably can agree with me there. I think, you, you know, there's one place in, called Buffalo Wild Wings that actually cook their chicken wings and beef tallow. But Canada just had every single Buffalo Wild Wing closed down. So now yeah. I'm going to have to go visit my friend Carrie this summer to eat some Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings. <laughs> oh, I wanted to join that. Yeah, one more thing, though, is that, you know, it's a, it's a marathon. It's a long journey. So if you kind of put ourselves into the very, very restricted diet and lifestyle, ain't going to last, right? Yes, Sometimes you're right. It, you're right. You're we have right. to live our life. You know, one thing though, I try to tell people is that I'm not to try to just extend my life. I just want to live better. If yeah. I were to die tomorrow, it's not a sign of failure. I already reverse. Sammy, already, do you, you know, yeah. Do you have Do you have kids? Sorry to cut you off. Do you have? No, children? I don't. I don't. don't. I don't. Yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. family, no, 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 no doctor supports my cancer treatment. But yeah. here, here's the thing: uh, because of the incredible, beautiful, wonderful followers, my community, yeah. they make me accountable. Hold, hold me accountable. Otherwise, I would have been dead. That's why you know, consulting people with cancer is my way to giving back. Yes, That's I agree. I, I agree with you. I kind of feel the same way. Um, I just have, I have, um, just on the flip side of things, the only thing, like I love living a healthier life. I agree with you. And that's what I'm doing with cancer. The only thing that I kind of want to, I'm being a bit selfish here. I want to live a bit longer than mm -hmm. maybe I'm supposed to because mm -hmm. of my son, because of my two sons, it's my two, understand. my two, son, Understandable. My two sons make me a little bit selfish that I want to stay here with them, uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you're so right. Uh, I think you and I, ha I've realized my calling right now. And I know some people, Sandra and some other people, uh, you know, I, I'm a high school phys ed teacher and that was my, vo yes. vo that was my vocation, mm -hmm. but my, vo my, my mm -hmm. vocation, my vocation right now has changed. I can still be a teacher, 
but it's mm-hmm. not in that it's not in that building. I, I you mm-hmm. know I, I'm in the YouTube world. I'm in the Zoom world. Uh, I'm meeting with people uh, at Starbucks uh, for not n- not really to have the coffee. It's more mm-hmm. to to sit down and talk and to interact. I know wow! Carrie, Carrie, Brilliant! Carrie and I, Amazing. Carrie and I are, are going to create uh, a weekly show. Carrie, is that, am I giving out too many secrets? No, no, go for it's it. Gonna, I'm looking forward be, to it. It's going to be a little bit kind of like uh, a coffee house where I think we're going to kind of call it a coffee house where it's uh, we sit down with like me, Carrie, Adam, Dwight, and, and we and we live and we talk about living mm. and we talk about healing humanity and we talk about mm. all those things because, Sammy, you're so right. I, I'm on this. Um, what, what inspires me and motivates me is, 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 is to keep living right now, living healthy. And helping and helping other people, yeah, and, uh, about coding, big time. I think so. So thank you. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. When I walk away tonight, Sammy, you, you've motivated me to work a little bit harder at <laughs> helping other people because thank that's you. what I yeah. think. That's what I think. Let's do it. I, I, I let's do it because I think whatever God we believe in, I think all gods, they call human beings to Earth to help other people. And I've, mm. and I've and I've so realized we have a mission. We have a mission, strong mission sure. to Let's be completed. Hey, yeah, um, Terry, should we take a few more questions, or is it? I just want to find the right time. I think I do do need to check out. Um, sure. Do you want to I, check out now, or do you want to take a couple questions? Yeah, should we take a couple questions, and but I just want to say, Sammy, just because I am checking out, I want to do this again. I want yeah. maybe maybe when we have our coffee house going, Carrie, we can get Sammy on and we keep doing stuff like this. Yes, yeah. yes, sounds fantastic. Yeah, Sammy, new new best friends. Anything but, you ever want to jump on? By the way, the coffee in our coffee house, we're not drinking plant based. We're drinking Carrie's carnivore coffee. That's the one we're drinking. <laughs> hey, Carrie, right. do you remember? Do you remember your carnivore coffee? <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Straight up beef tallow. <laughs> right, right. I watched it. It's great. Brilliant. Right. Still, I, I kind of hung on the, you know, like green tea aspect. I can't right. just uh, give up green tea. <laughs> and, one, and one more thing, because I'm sorry, because I, I know I'm going to have to go soon. I'll, I'll, I'll stick around for a couple questions. But Sammy, I watched a couple of your Instagram things. And I love how much how passionate you are about exercising. And I and yes, I, I do. And I and I love it, too. I like playing mm-hmm. sports a little more than exercising. But and the one exercise I, I noticed you doing that I love is box jumps. When you jump oh, up and yes. Oh, yes. So you I, know I, what? You, you, you and yeah. I, we got to have a competition. We're going to have to oh, set yes. up some type of friendly yeah. competition. All definitely, right? Definitely, definitely. You know what? I Five years ago, I was told that my bone density was equi- almost similar to 80 years old female, 8 to 0 years female. Wow, wow. Osteopenia. Now, three months ago, I checked, uh, you know, like my bone density using a DEXA scanning. I'm at low range, but normal area, normal range. I reversed Australian Wow. Jumping box is uh, one of the kind of uh, weapons. Jumping to, box, that, that, help, that helps. The impact, with, with impact on your bone. Yes, oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Nice. I'm, awesome. Well, we got some questions here. I just have one quick, Dr. Barry Finger, one quick question for Sammy. Uh, so, Sammy, you mentioned earlier GKI, and mm-hmm. you mentioned cancer feeds off of glucose and glutamine. And one thing that Jeff and I have struggled with talking to Professor Seafried is there used to be drugs for glutamine, like Dawn's Don't. and these other things. Yeah. And they're like, it seems like you can't get them anywhere. So long story short, I was wondering, do you have any drugs or procedures or anything you've done to attack the glutamine? Because you're already doing the glucose, obviously, with your diet and Okay, uh, what I'm taking is that gr- as a glutamine blockers is fendenzadol. Fendenzadol. I, ha- I I hope that I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah, fendenzadol. 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 Carrie and Carrie and I have become uh, quite educated with fendenzadol, and that okay. it, it really helps. Thomas Seafried, Shafi, a lot of uh, D- Tony Hampton. They brought us to that. Uh, parasite medicine and mm-hmm. I've done a lot of research and Carrie's been sending me lots of stuff and, I, and I'm happy to say I've just added it to my regimen and I can tell oh, I, I, yes. got, I got, good, I got no problem I did mm-hmm. um, I came back from a vacation with my wife in the Bahamas and I did and when I came back I did nine straight days of fembendazole 222 oh. mg's and then I took a 
four or five day break. I, I mm-hmm. had chemo. And then I just finished today another nine days. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, exper- yeah. I'm experimenting with myself. Tr- I don't tr- know if tricky. I'm doing it right. Sure. Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, Katimini. The tricky thing is though, glutamine is actually important for our system. Gut lining and uh, immune system or muscle recovery, that. all of that. Yes. That's why we can't just take the you know, glutamine because forever. That's why for, for my, my protocol is uh, three days on, four days three off. Days. I've heard that I've heard that protocol too. Yeah, um, yeah. I might sw- I might switch to that. I want to see mm. what uh, uh, I ha- I handled nine days no problem. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't oh, really I have, see. I didn't really have. I don't know. I just want to. I don't. I don't think there's a true protocol. I've heard like Joe Tippins is uh, mm, protocol is a little yeah, bit different. Most of the famous uh, one. Yeah, I've heard people do seven days straight. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no real. No concrete way to do it i the three day is normal i've heard, i have heard that a lot um but anyways carrie anything to add on there about your findings of fembendazole or anything no i'm just glad sammy said that because it's a nice sort of support to see is there is is there anything else you're doing sammy uh in terms of the cancer treatment right oh or, yeah i do hyperbaric oxytherapy once in a week it is said uh two or three times a week is the best, but uh, because of the financial constriction, constriction, I just uh, yeah. be able to, you're right, expensive, huh? So uh, once I just started week. doing it too. Yeah. I just started, Oh, really? I just started, I'm, I'm in a routine now. Carrie knows it. Uh, how, I go, how often? Uh, how so often? I, go tw- I go twice a week on oh, my non-chemo. Good. So this past week I went twice, but next week I only go once. And the reason why is because next week's my chemo week and I have that, that bottle attached to me, which is... Um, Sorry, it's a mechanical device. You can't go in the hyperbaric with any mm. metal or 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 any uh, mechanical. Yeah, any pressure on. in it. You can't. Well, you can't have a glucose monitor on anything mm. that's. Oh, uh, really? CZM you as well. You, you got to take everything off to go into mm-hmm. my hyperbaric. They're very strict. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. on my chemo week, I can only go once a week. On my non-chemo week, I go twice a week. But to expand on the hyperbaric, um, I have a Wim Hof instructor, Wim Hof mm-hmm. breathing mm-hmm. and cold plunge. Mm-hmm. And Famous. Wim Hof, Wim Hof, if done properly, it actually mm-hmm. mimics hyperbaric. Um, in oh, terms of hyper, o- hyperventilation, right? And in, t- in terms of getting oxygen to your cells, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Get, yeah. um, so it, it, it's, it's, I think you and I are on to something in terms of um, giving 100% oxygen to our cells and mm-hmm, try to mm-hmm. stimulate those stem cells that will, will, will help with, with can, fighting can, cancer. I, can I add what you were saying, Jay? Sure, can I add? sure. The thing is that the reason hyperbolic oxygen therapy works is because of the uh, kind of created a loss, reactive oxygen species in a good way. Actually, yes. the reaction oxygen species can be created by exercise. Exercise so, too, yes, right, I agree. Right. That's I why agree. we are doing exercise actually, you know, some, kind of a similar effect to you know, hyperbolic oxygen, oxygen therapy or, you know, him of, you know, hyperventilation. It's all taking in the oxygen to our cells more yes. effectively way. I agree with you. I need mm-hmm. to up, up my exercise game. Ruth. Awesome. Hey, Jeff, I know you got to run. I just want to say thank you so uh, much. Here's a comment from Ruth. You look amazing, healthy, wonderful. Jeff sent me a picture from when he was working out on vacation and you're like the next Dr. Chafee. It's incredible, man. You're killing it. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I just want to say I'm looking at my comments too. And there's a lot of, uh, since I brought up that carnivore coffee house, maybe that's something we want to call it. Carnivore coffee house. Mm. Uh, I got these people that, the, uh, Rose, she's my Mexican friend. Um, she wants to be on a coffee car- carnivore house, uh, or so carnivore coffee house. There's a whole bunch of people that are really excited, Carrie. So, we gotta we gotta keep doing these live streams and turn it into a weekly show. I think, a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. Pick a date. We're, I'm good to go. Excellent. And uh, I I'm gonna take off, guys. Um, you guys keep chatting and enjoy. It's been an absolute pleasure, Sammy. I'm gonna be following. Thank you. you like, I'm gonna be following you like crazy. And, yeah, keep in uh, touch. I will for sure. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Jeff. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you bye. soon. Bye. Awesome. Oh, Thank you so much. Great. Uh, shout out to Jeff. He's amazing. Sammy, every time we do like a live stream, this is the way it should be. It's family first. He's always in the car at a soccer mm-hmm. game or he's got things going on. So it's he has his priorities in order, which is mm-hmm. which is awesome. Definitely. Um, 
Sammy, do you have some time? I know we're, wow, we're already over an hour now. Do you have some time <laughs> to take a few questions? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Let's take uh, several questions. All right. Just real quick. We have a bunch of you, new YouTube members. Thank you so much. Carnivore Chef Bruno, uh, Alma, Noel, Bob, Pop Eater, Gifted Five, and then 10 Homestead Hall memberships. Thank you so much, Bob. That's so generous for you. Every All of the memberships and donations we get go to the Healing Humanity documentary. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for that. Uh, question we have for, uh, let's see right here. Uh, here's one for Sammy. How do you get a GKI test? This is my first time hearing about it. Okay. GKI number can be measured by glucose ketones measurement device. I use keto mojo. This is, I think, uh, one of the most famous, you know, uh, glucose keto number, you know, measurement device. Keto mojo. Keto mojo is the uh, name of the product I've been using. Yes, Keto Mojo, shout out. I just sent one to Jeff. <laughs> so they don't have them in Canada for some reason, but they're available on oh. Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah. Even Amazon. I live in Japan. I can get that. Yep. So Keto Keto Mojo. Okay. And um, Cranky Carnivore Cutler said, another benefit of ruminant meat is the anti-cancer nutrient trans vaccinic acid that improves the ability of CD8 cells to infiltrate tumors and kill cancer cells. It's found only in ruminant meat. Oh. Never heard that one before, but no. sounds sounds good. Very promising. Right. I love what you said earlier, Sammy, about the ruminant meat versus regular meat. I, I was so privileged to interview Dr. Barry, and he talked a mm. lot to me about glyphosate and forever chemicals and pesticides and things that get in the grains. Like you said, that single chambered stomach animals like chickens and, and um, eat, and then you eat that meat and you end up with that in your system. So it's, it's something that's often overlooked in a, I think a problem also with a lot of plants and vegetables too, that people don't but think the, about. But one thing though, I, I'd like to mention once again, is that I don't want to, to kind of uh, uh, want to, okay, here, here's the thing. Majority of people, I think that, uh, being on the, let's say, chicken wings and eggs and, you know, yeah, are okay compared to so-called standard diet. Right. Much, absolutely better. You are top-notch game. Just that you have a sensitivity or autoimmune disease or cancers and neurogenetic disease or, you know, like a type 2 diabetes are the folks. We have to be careful. Rather than that, just eat chicken wings. Right. Does Sammy have a channel? Uh, before Sammy answers that, I just want to say Sammy has a website, which I have linked to in the description. It's SammyCancerSupport.com. And I also have your Instagram in the description. I just added. Do you have a YouTube channel or anywhere else people can find you? I do have a YouTube channel, but here's the deal. Since I'm talking about cancer, I'm talking about uh, the fact that primary cause of the cancer is not the gene. YouTube decided that they took down some of the videos for me. Uh -oh. I was a little bit, you know, put in the ocean. And so it's a difficult to find my channel. Of course, I do have a channel. Search me, Sami Tugano. Sami is a Sami. Tugano, the T U G A G. To, sorry, sorry. T U G A N O. Tugano. This is my name of the channel. I hope you can find me. If you're lucky, awesome. you can find me. <laughs> I will. I'll find it too, and I'll add it to the description after, so people can yeah. find it as well. All right, all right. But the same, same, you know, contents I, I always put, uh, publish on Instagram. Right, Tristan Lee. Uh, best way to cook a steak? Oh, I just uh, grill it. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't do fancy steamering or not nothing. Just a grill it. I do the reverse. I, I smoke it sometimes and then sear it, but it's nothing's better than just throwing it on the grill. It's sometimes yes, overcomplicated. That that's a simplicity is uh, one of the great things about, you know, carnivore, isn't it? Yes. Something I never anticipated going into carnivore too. It's very liberating and freeing not to have to worry about recipes and ingredients and what are we going to have for lunch and dinner? No, just eat a steak, throw it on the grill and we're on exactly. with my life. Exactly. And you know, you're not going to get bored. Right. Uh, question for Sammy. Uh, how annoying would it be if someone asked you to donate to cancer research? How? Un 
I don't know. I never thought about this aspect. Yeah, I I think、uh, I don't mind if I have a such a mean to do so. But am I answering the question? Yeah, I think so. I think they're getting at. I I don't know. Jeff mentioned before、mm-hmm. he wishes that if he were to donate for cancer research, that more of the money would go to talk about metabolic therapy. Ah, just okay. Chemo. I, I, the the thing is that the currently,、uh, some of the like a、uh, popular topics in cancer biology is finding a、uh, uh, something something kind of a little to do with、uh, metabolic. Approach just focusing on the how to、uh, focus on the immune system to detect the cancer, or again some drug to kill cancer, but、uh, still cancer needs a systematic, you know, like a the approach, aka ketogenic diet. He, here is the thing that why modern approach is failing is due to the fact that modern medicine is based on the、uh, let's say the. The a new no 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 jam theory jam okay jam theory idea behind is that they want to get rid of the bad stuff. That's why if you have a cancer, get rid of the bad stuff. Surgically remove it or chemically kill it or burn it using radiation. But、uh, in this sense, the cancer is going to come back because they are lacking the more systematic. Comprehensive approach, which namely called metabolic approach.、Mm. So, if you kind of put the money on、uh, research, they end up doing the same thing, trying to get rid of the bad stuff. Ain't gonna、right. go any nowhere. Sammy, when you were diagnosed with cancer, did ever anyone ever talk to you about nutrition or metabolic therapy, or was it only traditional chemo and medication? Of course, nobody knew about you know ketogenic diet approach for cancer treatment, but、uh, I had known about ketogenic approach for cancer treatment way way before my diagnosis. That's、mm. why I wasn't upset. I was chilled out because I had been doing good、um, beneficial stuff for my cancer treatment. I knew it. Yes, I love that.、Mm-hmm. I. I... That's one of the biggest things I've learned from talking to Jeff and some others with cancer. It's、um, this whole thing with. I, I just wish that people were given this as an option if you get diagnosed with cancer, just so they have it as a tool in their toolbox. Metabolic therapy and Professor Seafried's work. We have a link in the description.、Um, Sammy, I'd love for you to take a look at it if you get a chance too, and I'd be happy to add your website to it. It's our cancer action plan, and it's just like, hey, if you know someone diagnosed with cancer, oftentimes they don't have a plan. They go to the doctor and they're told chemo and chemo only, and they don't know about these things like like Sammy knew about. So in the cancer action plan, we have Professor Seafried's work, we have Jeff's regimen,、um, what he's doing in terms of eating carnivore diet, his GKI. Scores and things like that, and it's all just kind of planned out. It's completely free. We're trying to get a million signatures, basically saying if you support this, like if you're ever diagnosed with cancer, we want our doctor to say, "Here's another option, another tool in your toolbox. It's metabolic therapy for cancer." So, anyone that's watching that's interested in learning more about that, there's a link in the description below.、Um, it's completely free, and we keep adding to it. So, I'll, I'll probably I'll add Sammy's website to that as well. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic! Wow, wonderful. Why didn't I notice your project? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got this st- moment. I I need to start talking about it more. I have it in the descriptions of my video. We did a、mm-hmm. video with Professor Seafried, a cancer roundtable. If I do another cancer roundtable, Sammy, I would love to invite you to that. Oh,、um, please do. You're interested. We did one with Professor Seafried, Jeff, Ronnie Campbell, I watched Diane.、It. Oh, thank you. And then, did you see the one? There was a gentleman on there, Brad, and he did a documentary called "Cancer Evolution." Have you had a chance to see that、oh, yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was invited to be on their documentary film, but for some reason, that schedule kind of kind of stuff and it went、okay. through. Yeah, I, I'm they, really interesting. They they recently, well, I think it was about a month ago. They had the first episode out. It's very good. You probably know it all already, but for anyone watching, it talks about. 
uh, Otto Warburg, and mm -hmm. it gets into a lot of the research that Professor Seafried has been talking about for probably 30 years now, but it explains it very well. It's a really good documentary. But mm -hmm. Brad's um, team, they have uh, a whole bunch of, they, he, they call them cancer thrivers, but they have YouTube videos from individuals with cancer that are doing metabolic therapy and they're just thriving they're having amazing results so it's kind of uh i think we have a link to that on the cancer action plan too but yeah we need i need to i need to talk about the cancer action plan more because i haven't i haven't talked about it very much but i we're almost at five thousand signatures which is pretty cool oh wow uh, yeah nice we're trying number yeah nice even number we're trying to get to a million the the amazing thing sammy is there's so many comments and testimonials on there from people that are like I lost my wife to cancer. I just wish she would have known that this was an option. And then there's other people that use these therapies that Professor Seafree is talking about that are having really good success. So and there's people leaving videos on there. So yeah, it's a it's a free resource. The link is in the description mm. below. And we're constantly updating it. So yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Here's a question from Susan. Uh, my husband is in remission, but still having Keytruda infusions. Wondering if the dewormer medication would be beneficial to him i must say yes but the most important thing is that cut the glucose down should should be the first thing you should do he should do you know yeah of course of course better doing something is much better but a glucose reduction should be the first and then thinking about uh, you know like a dewormer that stuff right what do you think yeah I 100% agree. And it, it it's it's hitting close to home for me right now, Sammy. Um, my dad, I don't know if he's watching this right now. He might not be. But my dad uh, was very sick last year. He was in the hospital four times. Oh. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. And he just went in for the fifth time. This was just a couple of days ago. Uh, well, actually, it was a couple of weeks ago. And he was diagnosed with cancer, uh, a weird blood cancer my dad has. Mm -hmm. um, and he's he's in the hospital right now. He he called oh. me and I don't know. He called me and he's like, it's not um, it's not that bad. It's gonna be fine. It's really early and they caught it early. But mm -hmm. to Sammy's point, that was the number one thing I told him. I'm like, I'm not an expert, but what, what I've learned from Jeff and Professor Seafood and everything, I'm like, Dad, just stop the sugar, get your glucose down. And even if you can't jump into carnivore, at least start doing keto, maybe 20 carbs or less, and then hopefully work into carnivore later. But you got to get rid of that. You mm -hmm, got to get mm -hmm. rid of that sugar. It's yeah. like Sammy said earlier, the, the evidence is clear. It's glucose right. and glutamine. It's right mm -hmm. there. It's yeah. It's so it's that simple, right? You know, the thing that get, get to the bottom way, uh, cancer is a metabolic disease. How to get the metabolic health is diet especially reduction of the carbohydrates simple as that yeah of course glutamine blockers important is important but uh, get your diet right first yes I, you know what one of the things i'm learning sammy i'm doing this documentary healing humanity and i've talked to so many individual doctors in different fields we never were going to do cancer until i met jeff but first i talked to um professor or i'm sorry dr philip ovadia a heart surgeon and his biggest message was, it's all about metabolic health. And that stuck in my head, this metabolic health, because my whole life, I was always told cholesterol, stop eating fatty mm, meat. No, no one ever told me about metabolic health. And then I talked to Dr. Chafee, and he was talking about metabolic health. And then I talked to Professor Seafried, and he was talking about metabolic health. So it's like, this is so important for cancer. But the thing I'm learning, talking to all of these experts it's all connected. If you fix your metabolic yes. health because you have cancer, you're going to reduce your odds of heart disease. You're going to reduce your odds of dementia, Alzheimer's, all of these things. It's like it's so many problems in the world. Exactly. It's just exactly. More metabolic health. I, I, I to want to repeat what you said. You know, what's the leading cause of death? You know, cardiovascular events, cancers, and a neurodegenerative disease, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and stuff, and a complication of the diabetes, they are stemming back from the, you know, metabolic you know, dysfunction, right? It, yes. It's almost, it cures everything if you get it right. Yes. That's the thing too. It's so exciting for people because Sammy, I'll get so many people. They'll say, I started carnivore four months ago. They saw my video and they feel so great. Their depression's gone, their weight's gone. And I'm like, 
they're thinking in the immediate, which is great. I did the same thing, but I'm like, think about in the future. Now your odds of getting cancer, your odds of getting dementia, your odds of having heart disease. Like, I'm, I'm not worried about any of those things. It could happen. It could still happen. But I think the odds are way less. And that's yeah. one of the big messages I want to get out with the documentary is everyone in the world, even now when I tell people I'm on carnivore, they're all like, what about your cholesterol numbers? You're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> you like, can't poop. Right. Yeah. What about fiber? I just want to shake them and say, what about metabolic health? Everybody mm -hmm. should be worried about their metabolic health, mm -hmm. especially in the world we live in right now. The metabolic health of most of humanity right now is very, very but poor. You say, but uh, Kerry, that medicine doesn't want to accept that because the, we are paying the uh, health insurance. No health insurance company, they're not going to in you know, reimburse, you know, dietary interventions, lifetime change, got to be medicine, got to be procedure, you know, like a normal, you know, surgeries and chemo and all of that. That's why medicine doesn't want to accept that. Right. Yeah. And then it's a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And you, you eat the, you eat the bad food, you get sick, and then you go to the doctor and they, oh, they sure. never, they don't fix the root cause of the problem. So that it's got a good business model. You're going to keep coming back. Yep, and then you end up with one of these. <laughs> All of these. I like this. Oh, I should have made that. <laughs> yeah. Box. yeah, these were a lot of these were for depression and anxiety, but every single one of these I don't need anymore and I didn't need, mm -hmm. and they were all poor metabolic health. It was just the food I was eating. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Great, so. great. But I'm on the journey of reduction of the sleeping pills. Since I was 15, I was given the sleeping pills. It's been going on. Then I've been working on the sleeping pill dosage, cutting half mm -hmm. and quartering and tapering off to the point that currently 5% of the normal dosage, which I'm proud of, is still working on it. Being right. on a carnival, still it's a very, very difficult to get off. Yeah, especially pills, sleeping pills. Right. Oh Here's a question from Neil. Question: Any reason someone who doesn't have cancer official diagnosis should not take dewormer as a prophylactic? Oh, I see. I'm not a specialist in many shop shape from home. That's a good question. But there is a one study suggests that any uh, like a massa glutamine brokers, many, many glutamine brokers, can reduce a poten possibility of cancer formation. But uh, it's not a clinical or randomized, not, none of those things. That's why I can't confidently tell you it is good. Mm, that's a good question. I wish I could provide the perfect answer. Yeah, that's a very tough one. I don't know the answer to that one either. I know, mm -hmm. I think during COVID, a lot of people were taking ivermectin and mm. uh, pr for prophylactic reasons, just in case they were to get it. But like Sammy said, it's a tough one because they're not, they're not doing studies but, on it for those purposes. Yeah. Can I, can I add another kind of a same, same story is that if you want to prevent your cancer, periodically you can do fasting or reduction of the carbohydrates, namely called ketogenic diet, or a carnival diet. It should, it's better than just taking some drug to inhibit the glutamine product uh, uptake. It's my opinion. Yes. Uh, Tellboy said, I don't know if this was a question or a statement, I'm doing just beef, salt, and water for now. I have bipolar one, amongst other things. I've been on and off for 15 years. Now I'm sticking to the lion way, no choice. Awesome. Hmm. Yeah, good job. That's a way. Stick to it. I, I got to shout out this one quick. I did this video with uh, Georgia Ede. She wrote this book, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind. Lots of individuals with bipolar. Oh, right. Metabolic health. It's all metabolic health. Depression, mm -hmm. anxiety, PTSD, schizophrenia, bipolar. So many stories of people overcoming that with by fixing their metabolic health and mm -hmm. eating a proper human diet. So. Great. Um, let's see. I think we have one or two more questions. Question for Sammy from Susan. Sammy, can you take lemon ball, magnesium, or melatonin instead of sleeping pills? Okay. Yeah, I, try. I, I do take magnesium. I happen to take a you know, lemon balm. Yeah, mer I, I do take melatonin, five to six milligram. Thank you very much. I will check that at lemon balm. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, Thank I have never heard of suggestion. 
I haven't heard of that one. Mm, um, sounds good. Good. Hey, I think we got all of the questions. Yay. Let me just make sure here. This has been great, Sammy. Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing your, sharing your story. I think it's really going to inspire a lot of people. Again, anyone watching right now, uh, Sammy's website is linked to below her Instagram. I'll add her YouTube channel. Uh, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap things up? Well, I speeded up everything I wanted to say, but I want to say thank you very much for giving opportunity to talk to your your audience and people out there. Thank you. Thank you, Sammy, for sharing your story. I, it's We did videos like this with Jeff before, and it's amazing because there's people out there that are diagnosed with something like stage four cancer, and they don't have anyone to relate to or talk to or anything. And it's so inspiring and so helpful for people. Mm -hmm. I know Thank the video you. I did with Jeff, there's so many people commenting that it's helping them out. So I'm mm -hmm. sure your story is going to help a lot of people too. You have an open invite, Sammy, anytime. If I do another video with Professor Seafried, I will contact you oh, right please, away. Oh, so. please, please. I love that. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll be back. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sammy. You're awesome. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you, everyone, you for too. your comments. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye.